Senator Nyonka, yes. we have on several occasions spoken about the public debt issue and you have quoted figures. I mm -hmm. mean, at the moment, we're talking about an estimate of about 9.6 trillion shillings, so just about 400 billion shillings shy of the ceiling of 10 trillion. Sammy, now, I can tell you right now, that money has gone up to 11 trillion. How so? I can come here tomorrow and I'll prove it to you. You know how much money the KK government has borrowed in the last nine months? Mm -hmm. Close to 1 trillion. It's close to 1 trillion. This ceiling here, for me, it's a hoax. Mm -hmm. The amount of money that we are borrowing, the amount of money that we are spending, it looks like we have learned nothing. And I don't know how this is going to be handled because the truth is, if you look at what we are dealing with right now, even with the debt ceiling coming in, even with the suggestions about, oh, you know, what we need to do now is we are going to be at 55% of GDP and therefore our debts are going to be managed. Unless we create austerity measures, unless the, the KK government, mm -hmm. as we speak, I mean, you saw something yesterday, there was a report which came out that the president and the deputy president, the amounts of money that they are spending in their offices mm -hmm. is just shocking. I mean, the, you, you saw the report where they were saying uh, President Uhuru's expenditure in terms of uh, hospitality was 1.6 mm -hmm. billion shillings, mm -hmm. which he had spent over a period of six months. The current government, the amount of money that was quoted yesterday was actually 2.9 billion in the same six months. The amount of money that is being spent by our friends in government and what that money is doing and how he's doing it is what we are going to start interrogating, even if it means on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Because the truth is, the way we are behaving, first, we are behaving as if we are not a country that is in debt. Number two, we are behaving as if the economy is fantastically well. All right, so we keep receiving this money from the World Bank and the IMF and everything, and we keep saying, oh, everything is moving on well. In fact, we have increased the debt ceilings for everything. Okay, uh, CDF money that is being put for roads, previously the money could have been most probably 20 million, now it is 50 million per member of parliament. Um, you look at what is happening in terms of our performance, look at what we are doing. You saw what uh, the control of budget talked about yesterday. Mm -hmm. Sami, we are spending close to three billion shillings a month traveling the world. And, and, and this is something we are just looking at. And for me, I come back to you. This is why I keep telling my brothers in the opposition where we are stuck. And, I, and that is where I agree with you, my, my leader, Honorable Farah, Farah Malim. We need to start taking the government into check. We need to be, right now, in fact, the person who's conducting oversight is the media. That's why Moses is screaming at them. In the opposition, we are not doing the job we are supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Because the amount of money that is being spent, mm -hmm. the amount of motorcades you see, the helicopters that you see that are flying all over the place, mm -hmm. there's something wrong with the way we are managing our economics. And so, a debt anchor of 55%, uh, uh, I, th I think you studied economics. Yes, I did. Right. So 55%, yes. if assuming that our GDP now is at 14 trillion shillings, of course, Dean uh, Dinero says it's at 16 based on uh, projections. Yes. But even if you had to use that 16, 55% would be about just over 8 trillion shillings, which is still lower than our current debt. Yes. Where does that take us because now him he explains that it's an anchor so that we'll be seeing how far away we are from 55 and then you adjust accordingly thank you my worry as i sit here my worry is we are getting into more debt remember the president has been announcing over and over and over he has been talking and saying you know we are not going to be an administration that will be borrowing money we are going to tax you the money that we get from the taxes is going to enable us to start running government and then we'll pay our debts and we are going to do everything what is happening right now we are borrowing excessively mm -hmm. Number two, the second thing that is happening as we speak right now, if you look at how the government is structuring itself, mm -hmm. and I was so happy, I, I, I saw it yesterday also, when uh, the president's chief economic advisor, David D. Uh, actually, these days, my, my GPS is, is David D. He's saying, we are into these bad habits of constantly being wasteful of constantly spending government money for things which are not critical. Mm -hmm. And for me, this is something that the president has to take responsibility. 
Because the truth is, Sami, we are not changing anything from what was happening during the Uhuru government and what is happening right now. I don't see anything happening. And remember, remember, there's something I'm worried about. Remember there was fuel which we bought and in six months we are going to be paying close to one trillion shillings. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell me whether that one trillion is going to come from to pay for that fuel. The, the government to government uh, deal with yes. the Gulf countries. Yes. Well, yeah, the credit will mature in six months, but it will mature for the first month. Yes. So it's just about $500 million. Um, dollars. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it has to be paid. Yes, somebody's going to have to pay it. The so, the so, so when you say that, that the government is wasteful, yet it is parliament that allocates these resources. What's going on? But why, why are we missing? Sam, Sam, this is what we've been saying. And this is what this is why I've said, and I, I think I said it two weeks ago. Kenyans, because we are in this democracy roller coaster, mm -hmm. Kenyans need to understand that when you are electing a government, you must interrogate what that government stands for. Why? Because whatever miracle that Kenyans want the opposition to do, whether Kenyans want Raila to pick a rope and go and hang himself, whether they want Kalonzo Musioka to start screaming with sufrias on his head, talking about how the administration has increased taxes and there are things which the government has done which are wrong. The truth is, this is a government in power. This is the government that Kenyans elected. This is the government that is running the show, and this is the government that is running this economy. So what we can do, because we don't have the numbers. In the Senate, we have a, a shortfall of about six senators. In the National Assembly, uh, uh, Speaker, how many? It's big, massive it, difference. It's, it's massive. massive. So our job, and this is what we must do in the opposition, our job is to constantly keep reminding ourselves that our job as the opposition is to keep telling Kenyans when things are going wrong. Mm. But we can also tell Kenyans when the government has done well. Okay. That is what this thing is about. This democracy okay. is never meant for me to come on TV or to go out there in a public rally and keep saying the government has messed up, the government hasn't done anything. I'll give you an example. The government has been employing teachers. We don't know how many they are. We don't know their distribution. We don't know where they are. You come in. The government now is talking about certain things which it needs to do. We are demanding... I am going to start demanding you cannot go and allocate 2.6 billion shillings mm -hmm. to do water in Moranga when in Kisi I don't have 200 million. Those are the issues we are going to start discussing about because these taxes that we are being taxed, everybody is being taxed. So we are going to demand fairness, equity in the distribution of these resources, whether the resources are going to go to the county governments and whether the money is going to be equitably distributed, whether the counties that are supposed to get the equalization fund, which is supposed to remove them from the historical injustices which have existed to come to a level whereby they can pick up on their own and continue because now money is coming for the county government. Those are the issues which I believe we need to look at as the opposition. <laughs> Finally, Sami, I want to tell you this. My brother Farah Fala Malim has talked about it. Why is it that in the opposition we have not even started talking about a referendum mm -hmm. to have electoral injustices sorted out to make sure that the equity in the distribution... People are talking about this one man, one vote. Why are we fearing it? Let's discuss it. Let's, you can't have one constituency, which is Kiambu, having a registered number... Kiambu as a county, having a registered number of voters being... I'll give you an estimate, assuming there are 400,000. Mm -hmm. And then this county is given exactly the same amount of money with county X or Y, which has got a registered number of 120,000. It is unfair. Okay. Yeah, so these are the things as the opposition, because we must understand that the role of the democracy is not even to be hateful to the sitting government. In fact, the issue of members of parliament going to visit the president and talking with him about issues, according to me, all you need to do is call the party leader. If I wanted to go and visit uh, President William Ruto, I'll just call Rail and tell him I'm going to see Ruto because there's one or two things I need to do. And once I'm done with the meeting, I'll then come and discuss with him. There is nothing wrong All with right. meeting the president. All right. All right. Yeah. I, I, but that doesn't mean you compromise our position right now as the opposition. Okay. Yes.